Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Bob. It is so good to be with you. It's so good to be with you. I missed you. And it's so good to be with you, too. Hi. Man, are you guys having a great summer so far? I sure hope so. And uh, it's wonderful to be back here. Let me ask you, have you been watching every week? Have you been joining us every week? Because if you were, you'd know what we've been talking about all summer, wouldn't they, Jen? They would. Mm, what is it? Who knows what we've been talking about all summer? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Anyone? Can you tell me? Ah, that's right! Faith! Faith. Seeing what you can't see because of what you can see. Amazing. And the greatest part of faith is that we have Jesus as an amazing example. We can have faith in him because of what he did and because of what he does in our life and what he does with people that we know. Great stories from the Bible. All those people really lived. That's the coolest thing about faith. Right? What do you think, John? I concur. Hmm. I agree. It's so true. Here in the Bible, there's a guy we can read about who went through a lot of wild things in his life. Like really wild things. We've talked about several of those things already as we've gone through God's big story. This man that I'm talking about, do you know who it is from? I think I do. The Apostle Paul. And it's true, Paul had some crazy things happen to him. It seemed like he was almost always in danger because he taught so boldly about Jesus. In a world full of angry people, one courageous man was willing to tell others about Jesus even when he was uh, made fun of, even when he was thrown in jail. The man, the legend, the man of faith, Paul. It sounds like a movie trailer, right? Well, I mean, in many ways, Paul's life was like a movie. He was beaten up and thrown into jail and even chased out of a bunch of towns just for telling the good news about Jesus. Finally, in Jerusalem, Paul was arrested by Roman soldiers after an angry mob tried to kill him. I mean, the soldiers were actually afraid that the crowd would kill Paul, so they put him in jail to keep him safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't even imagine how scary that must have been for Paul. But Jesus himself appeared to Paul in prison and he told Paul to be brave. He knew that Paul had boldly told people about him and he still had more plans for Paul to keep on going. He knew that in order to do that, Paul would need great courage. Courage. Man, this is gonna be a great story. I can't wait to see this story. Will you guys join us for the story? Before we do though, focus your attention on the screen and let's watch this. I'm MC Haggis, and this year is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Give him a sample, Seamus. Woogoo! That's why he's the world's best. All right, this month is about faith. Believing in what you can't see because of what you can see. And actually, what we need to see right now are some lost sheep the whole town's been looking for, right, Seamus? Uh, hey. Well, we're gonna find them because of this. This here is a sheep whistle. It's guaranteed to call any sheep from anywhere. Hey. Well, of course hey. it'll work. It'll work. I bought it on Weebay, after all. All right, let's give it a go. Aye! I know, it didn't make a sound. You don't have to yell at me, okay? Maybe it was upside down. All right, here we go. Aye! Seamus, will you stop yelling? I, you're gonna scare all the sheep away. You know, I'm starting to think that this whistle actually doesn't work at all. You gonna give it a go? Go ahead. Okay, well that's just great. Between this whistle not working and you yelling, those lost sheep will never ever- Oh! Oh, Seamus, look between us! Look between us! Oh. Wait a second, wait a second. Blow that sheep whistle again. Go, 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 go! Seamus, Seamus! 
the sheep whistle worked. It, it must be like a dog whistle. It, it makes a sound we can't hear. But, but it called the this, this, this sheep over to us. Oh, you know what? I feel like rapping about it. Kick it. Sometimes things don't seem to work. Our trust in them, we start to shirk. But when we trust, we find a quirk. We can trust in what we can't see because of what we can see. Like how this whistle worked. Now that's fate. Word. <laughs> oh, see you later, dancing sheep. See ya. Oh, okay. I wonder if they make a silent whistle for snack foods. Hey. Oh yeah? Oh. Wow. That's amazing! Blow, blow it again. Completely missed my face! That was a crazy... Okay, blow it again. Yeah! That's great. Hi, RPK. Welcome back to another weekend in your living room. We are smack dab in the middle of July. It is summer. It is hot. We don't know what we're going to do in the fall, but you know what we do now? We know that we can count on God. And our basic truth this weekend is I can trust God no matter what. I know you guys know this song. Come on, let's rock out and let's sing it together. We can trust Him. against them like a lion. You know this song, it's called Lions. We did it at VBS a few weeks ago. I want you to stand up. I want you to close your eyes and just sing it to him. Feel free to raise those hands up. Now let's sing it.
Lord Jesus, that's our prayer today. When we face our trials, when we face our problems, we're not going to run away. We're not going to cower in a corner somewhere. We will stand like a giant. We will walk like a lion. And that's not because of our own power. It's because of you. It's because you give us strength and power and you make us bold. And we are just so grateful for that. So God, right now when things still seem kind of confusing and a little bit frightening, we rely on you. We come to you. We throw all of our cares to you. And we thank you for that. You are awesome. We love you, and we just ask all of these things in your precious name. Amen. You got this! You got this! You got this! You have got this! Now we're focused. Hey everyone, it's Erica. You might be wondering what I'm doing talking to myself in the mirror. Hey, what's up, how you doing? Well, I decided I needed a little encouragement because it's been sort of a hard week. You see, a few days ago, my aunt was stuck at home with a broken leg. So, I took some soup to her house, but then her dog <coughs> peed <coughs> on my shoe. And then I slipped and spilled the soup all over the place. And then the next day, I was walking home from the library and a car drove through a puddle next to me and splashed water all over me and all over my library book. Are you kidding me? Then, yesterday, I tripped over a sleeping cat and I fell into a prickly rose bush. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, you know, it's been one of those weeks. And I'm trying to encourage myself to have a better day. But it's going to take faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So even though I still have a few scratches from yesterday's catastrophe, I have faith that today will be better. See? It's better already! Today's story is all about some people who are having a bad week. Actually, several weeks. And uh, okay, maybe they had bigger problems and spilled soup, a wet library book, and a thorny rose bush. But my week was still pretty bad. <laughs> I'll see you when the storm passes. That'll make sense after the story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapters 27 and 28. Paul faced many difficult days because he taught so boldly about Jesus. He was beaten, made fun of, thrown into jail and run out of town. At last, in Jerusalem, Paul was arrested by Roman soldiers after a mob tried to kill him. He speaks against our law! Get, Get rid, rid of that guy! Ooh. Paul paced in his prison cell. The Lord stood next to him. Be brave. You have told people about me in Jerusalem. You must do the same in Rome. Because a group of Jews were plotting to kill him, Paul was taken to the governor in Caesarea. From there, he was ordered to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. Then, he was handed off to a Roman commander for the sea journey. I am Julius of the Imperial Guard. I am very imperious, but also a reasonable human being. Glad to hear it. Julius allowed Paul to visit with friends as they stopped at the port city of Sidon. From there, they sailed around Cyprus, transferred to a ship from Egypt, carrying grain to Italy. The ship fought against the wind for many days until they arrived in a town on the island of Crete called Fair Havens. It was already well into October, a risky time for sea travel. Men, 
I can see that our trip is going to be dangerous. The ship will be lost, and our own lives will be in danger. A reasonable concern. The pilot and ship's owner wanted to reach a better harbor for the winter. Pish posh. We can make it to Phoenix. Well... Feel that? A gentle southerly breeze. Perfection. We leave at once. Anchors away! But very soon, the gentle breeze transformed. Within a short time, the wind beat against the ship with the strength of a hurricane. The pilot gave up fighting the gale. Hoist the lifeboat! Secure ropes around the bow! Jettison the cargo! In the midst of the chaos, the Lord sent an angel to Paul. The next morning, Paul withstood the storm to encourage the crew and passengers. 276 people. A first, uh, not to say I told you so, but uh, I told you so. Second, not a problem. Last night, an angel from God told me, do not be afraid, Paul. You must go on trial in front of Caesar. God has shown his grace by sparing the lives of all those sailing with you. But we must run the ship onto an island. On the 14th night of the storm, the sailors realized they were nearing land. The water is only 90 feet deep here. Drop the anchor. The crew was so afraid of crashing against the rocks that they lowered the lifeboats, planning to escape and leave the passengers. Julius, these men must stay with the ship. If they don't, you can't be saved. A reasonable request. Cut the ropes. The soldiers cut the ropes so the crew could not escape. Just before dawn, Paul gathered everyone on board, shouting above the wind. Not a problem. None of you will lose a single hair from your head. Now, I'm asking you to eat so you can live. Paul took bread and thanked God. He then broke the bread and ate it. Everyone was filled with hope while they had some food to eat as the gray morning dawned. There's the beach. Lift the anchors and we'll run her aground. But as the pilot steered desperately for shore, the ship hit a sandbar and began to break into pieces. The soldiers were planning to kill Paul and the other prisoners to keep them from swimming to freedom. Stop! Don't hurt them! Paul must live! Everyone overboard, swim to land or grab a piece of the wreckage! Miraculously, everyone made it to shore, just as God had promised. Welcome to Malta! The people of Malta were unusually kind as they built a fire to welcome this large group of wet and stranded visitors. I'll fetch some more firewood. Paul tossed sticks into the fire. Then a deadly snake slithered out and sunk his teeth into Paul's head. This man must be a murderer. The gods won't let him live. Not a problem, totally fine. Paul simply shook the snake into the fire. When the people saw he was unharmed, they decided he was a god. Publius, a chief official, welcomed Paul and the others into his home. Take whatever you need. Paul discovered that Publius, his father, was very sick. So he prayed. Jesus, please, heal this man. Publius, his father, was made well. All the sick people on the island flocked to see Paul and they too were healed. Paul had so much respect on Malta that when it was time to leave, the people of Malta gave him all the supplies they needed. Bon voyage! At long last, Paul neared Rome. The believers had heard he was on his way and traveled to meet him. Welcome to Rome. I thank God for you all. In Rome, Paul was allowed to live in his own home under guard. For two years, he welcomed anyone who came to see him. He told Jews and Gentiles alike the good news of Jesus, just as God promised he would. So a shipwreck is probably worse than tripping on a cat, but a bad week is a bad week. And the important thing to realize is that we all have problems and we all get to choose how we react to those problems. Paul chose to trust that God was with him no matter what he was going through. You see, Paul understood that God had a bigger plan. Ever since Paul came to know Jesus as God's son, 
He had devoted his life to telling others about Jesus. And Paul knew that no matter what problems he faced, they were worth it if it helped him spread the good news of Jesus to the world. So Paul didn't necessarily focus on the storm, the shipwreck, and the snake bite like they were problems. Instead, he trusted that God was leading him somewhere. He trusted that God had a plan. And Paul's not the only person who can change focus like that. We can too! When we hope and trust in Jesus, it can change how we look at our problems. That's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. When you're having one of those weeks, or months, or years. Or whenever we have a problem, sometimes the bad stuff is all we can focus on. But when you know that God has a plan and that Jesus is always with you, it can help take the focus off yourself and put your focus on Him. Whenever you're facing tough situations, remembering that God is with you can make it less hard or scary. So don't forget, God has got this. See you next time. Bye. Whoo! what a story. Finally, Paul had made it to Rome. Let's have movie trailer voice man close us out. You know, through all those troubles, snakes and beatings and jail and shipwrecks and everything, Paul still made it to Rome. And he made it in a way that he could tell people about Jesus. Amazing. Wow. So Paul was still under guard, but he was in a house, not a jail. He'd spend two years telling people the good news about Jesus. And there were so many times along the way when Paul could have given up. He faced storms, angry mobs, people trying to kill him, being arrested, and even, get this, being bitten by a snake. But through all of his problems, Paul never gave up. He knew this. Bottom line, knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. Paul didn't see his problem as something that would stop him. He knew that Jesus was always with him through all the good times and the bad times. That's something that we can remember. We can remember this when we have problems that seem overwhelming. <sighs> you know, Jeff, sometimes when I feel like things are overwhelming, it could be about work, it could be about my family, it could be about school, it could be about anything. Always knowing that Jesus is there with us makes me feel so much better because I know I can count on him and in his word to pull me out of that scared feeling. And sometimes I think about Paul and I remember what he went through. He really lived. He really did this. If he can do it, I can do it too. Only with Jesus' help. Absolutely, because Paul understood that Jesus is the one that God's big story is all about. Mm. He had faith that Jesus was really the Son of God and the Savior of the world. He understood that no matter what problems he faced, they were worth it for him to share Jesus. I mean, that's what we need to do. All of us, we need to trust God and remember that he's with us even when we face problems in life. When we do that, it changes things because bottom line, knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. That is so true. Knowing Jesus changes everything. God's gift to us of his son changed everything. And I'm so glad that you're my friend and that you're my friend too, because we all know that we have that amazing light, the light of Jesus in our hearts and in our spirit and in our world today. Could you pray for us? I will, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dear God, thank you so much for this amazing story from Paul's life. Thank you for seeing him through so many problems and keeping him safe along the way. Thank you for the reminder that no matter how scary or hard life can be, you will be with us through it all. We love you. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
What a great story. What a great topic. Faith. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I can't wait for you to join us again. And until then, have a great summer. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you next time. Bye.